Hello. Welcome to the green room. Hey, thanks. Hi, Brett. How's it, how's, how's it going? It's you going, keeping it green? It's it's going pretty good. Yeah. With the, We've got all the people that we have shown up. A lot of people We've here. got a lot of people. <laughs> we, we've had people on site before. Yes. In the steel building. Yes. For uh, shows and, uh, you know, we did magic shows out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time we've put put as many people in the in the big room the yeah. start the podcast studio because it's not it's also not the big room no the other one's the, the big, big room. room is the other the room. big one's the big one yeah yeah um but it's gonna be a blast we got scott sigler joining us here in just a little bit yeah brian and justin are around yes. i was thinking today as uh scott was coming around and he's being shown around uh that i realized oh our green room like yes it is the name of this show and what we have the concept of this space yes. <laughs> at, uh, every week. Uh, but also it is like a functional green room. Yeah. And those are diametrically opposite functions. They're completely. So uh, that's a fun thing. We, yeah. we made everything into content. Yes. Right. <laughs> this is like, if we, this is <laughs> like, we made the green room and then we made the green room a show. Like yes. if we had a dressing room and then we made the dressing room show. <laughs> <laughs> just let's stay out of the bathroom. Let's just agree. That's yeah. Because we tried to with the piss frog. Fucking piss frog, man. Yeah, piss frog. Uh, that cockroach. No, we can't do that. We can't. <laughs> we can't get into the piss frog here. Uh, Brett, I uh, I had uh, something I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Uh, Is it my review? Is it time for my review? No. Do you? Okay. Do you really want to lean into that? No. Bit? That's no, the I bit don't. you want to go to. I do not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking the other day, they've got uh, the AI chatbots. Mm -hmm. Meta is going to roll out uh, chatbots that you can talk to in WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And they know things. I don't know. They know yeah. about your hobbies, whatever. Yeah, they do. And uh, that's like that seems cute. It sounds cute. It sounds like, oh, you know, we're just, we're just being meta. We're just being cute. Uh, it sounds like hell. Mm -hmm. It sounds it sounds really bad. Uh, Tell me more. <laughs> thank you. Imagine this is the worst Socratic interview <laughs> ever. Okay, so you know there's a whole thing about cookies right now. Uh, the data cookies oh, in, the, okay. in the browser sure. the, with you. chocolate chip, Aunt like, Jemima. Mm -hmm. no, that's not cookie. Yeah, Aunt Jemima's not cookies at all. No, it's, it's not <laughs> syrup. Anyway, <laughs> syrup cookies. N now I would fuck with syrup cookies. Yeah. Is the thing. And so, you know, they use third, they use cookies to, to, to track you, make profiles of sure. you, uh, advertise to you. And there's, you, there's been, Google's been trying to get away from cookies and make their own Google cookies. Sure. Go googies. Googies. <laughs> Got to be very, very careful yes, with those ones. Me, mm. And uh, it, it, it made me think, well, if you can't, if you can't just track where people go, Maybe they'll just fucking tell you. Maybe they'll just tell your AI bot. Oh, I, you know, I gotta go to, I gotta go to work. I'm, I work at the dick sucking factory. Sure. Oh man. And then suddenly you start getting a lot of like dick sucking factory recruiting so, ads on your, on your Google, on your Google. It's, that is definitely something that <laughs> I would be down for. What? Yes. <laughs> For me, just to say this is what I do, yeah. Because then, then, what? then I can I can direct it a little bit more instead of having my subconscious right now. Like I don't need to know any more people have died. All right. So what am I doing to do that? Okay. And you're like, yeah. yes, you know, I sure love it when people don't die, and then maybe that'll change the algorithm. We're not so popular that the NSA watches us. Like you don't need to like counter and tell. I oh, know. I it's it's just I mean, I hate to be the guy that like brings horrific things to a comedy fight. Cause you should bring like a wiffle ball bat. Sure. You know, a, a one of those retractable knives. Yeah. You know, a whoopee cushion full of anthrax. The post apocalyptic Jackie Robinson baseball bat. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just all of those. Yeah. Uh it's a laugh a minute. But it's <laughs> Uh, it, I, I, when I thought about it last night, granted, it was a little, a little, a little, a little, a little tight. Yeah. And, uh, but that, it made me go, oh my fucking God, we're just going to tell, uh, we're just going to tell him everything, mm -hmm. you know, because imagine, right. Okay. So when, so it starts off. Okay. Here's my conspiracy theory. Okay. Get ready for it. 
Also, I'm becoming Dale Gribble. I'm also realizing I'm becoming Dale Gribble very I know where you live. <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> hey, okay. Dale. Okay. So, so first, it's like, okay, hey, you know, talk, we'll talk about your special interests. Yeah. What's your special interest? Sure. Oh, my gosh. You love trains. Yes. Oh, my God. You love monkeys. You're Andrew Maine. <laughs> uh, that, we love you, Andrew. And uh, I... And that's just how it starts, right? Okay, because mm-hmm. you like trains. Oh, well, what else? Do you? Oh, you know my, I, 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 I gotta go. It's my wife's birthday oh, tonight. Okay. Oh, Mark, oh there's a wife. Thank you, oh, thank right. you. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's the whole all of the technology about AI is trying to make it remember more things. Sure. Remember what you just talked about. Remember thing what you've talked about in the past. Right. But it does seem, it doesn't seem benevolent. <laughs> It's not exactly benevolent. No, to be like, it, it turns fairly quickly. Yeah. So weaponized. That's I'm I'm becoming a luddite. I think I'm becoming a luddite. I think it's because, and I think maybe Brian and I talked about this once, just he and I, mm-hmm. where he it, it, the the when you know how technology works, it's easy to get scared by it. Yes. And 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 but also the idea of there comes a point where you have to take. How much of the reins can you take in your own hands to get things the way you want to see it instead of yeah. the other? Because because yeah, that's the other thing is you can't we can't do anything about it. Uh, it's, like see, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. This social contract 2023. Get ready for it. Mm-hmm. If you make us do watchdogs, people are going to watch dogs. Yes. You know, I'm sorry. I don't know. That's not like <laughs> controversial at all. The, le- the the most lukewarm <laughs> take on the it's just yeah we're gonna yeah, attack you things are just, yeah I'm an adult anyway <laughs> I agree with much everything you th- no okay this I'm is trying a, to think of controversy I know, I, I here know, like, like, like this is the problem we think a lot alike yeah you got no pushback <laughs> from me There's no pushback yeah <laughs> that's horseshit why I don't I talked to you immediately out of your very good <laughs> argument the very good like thing we could have hung like yep. another 10 minutes on yep I just ate I just ate it all that's uh, okay that's fine let's let's do something else it's fine did you uh do you like football are you, uh, are you a footballer I I was a football fan until the Oilers left Houston mm. and became the Tennessee Titans that's right and then uh, I realized uh, uh, no cowboys. Tough, tough. No, no. I grew up in Houston. I can oh, never be a Cowboys that's fan. True. That's true. Uh, uh, I realized that we're not really cheering for a team. We're cheering for the shirts because the shirts stay around longer than the people on the team. Oh wow, that's really that's yeah. really insightful. Yeah, that's really sweet. You could put that on a fortune cookie. Yeah. Well, that's... or take that straight out of. Some comedian that I heard say that. Oh, but, yeah. no. I'm, I'm, hey, you know this is ostensibly a comedy podcast. I know we just did 10 minutes of the saddest shit yeah. ever. But like, this is supposed to be comedy. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that is definitely, I, I definitely ascribe to that mm-hmm. idea. And then it became, it's kind of like uh, Could, a football to me yeah. is like when you're playing a video game mm-hmm. and you start grinding and you just feel like you realize you're just killing pixels. It's oh, a lot um, the same where when I start realizing, hmm. oh, this is the thing. And this then is I, just the, a machine. You just look at it and you see Abe's Odyssey. It's just, it's just a, it's just a fucking oh, work planet. Boy, that's a great game. By yeah. the way, oh, was a good game. Oh yeah. yeah. Not to be controversial, but Abe's <laughs> Odyssey. I'll. It's, you get it's, it's Brant. I'm Brant's making a stand here. Approval. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they. Uh, uh, what would it take? Here's here's a question. Would this get you interested in football? I'm going to describe some circumstances for okay. you. Okay. It's at 9 a.m. Saturday morning okay. when you're watching it. 8 a.m. actually. 8 a.m. 8, 8 to 10 a.m. Central time here. That's, it's an early morning thing that's too on early. a Saturday. That's too early. Okay. I, I want to be watching cartoons. Well, okay, now hold on. Now, what if the football was cartoons? Then, mm-hmm. th- then that's uh, mm-hmm. what's what's mm-hmm. the anime about football? Uh, the oh, manga. Um, uh, uh, Ice Shield. Ice Shield Twenty One. There Christ. we go. I, you know what? I had the Twenty One too. Yeah, I also had Twenty One <laughs> in the back of my pocket. And I was like, if I say Twenty One, and it's right, 
Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, so maybe cartoon. So sure. Okay. If it's Ice Shield 21. What if on what, Saturday at 8 a.m.? What if it was your favorite franchise Pixar? What if it was the what if it was Pixar? You know, they make good stuff. I would watch that. Pixar makes good stuff. Yeah. What if what if they had the technology to take a football game? Sure. And in real time display it as if it was an as if it was Toy Story. All the football players are little guys. They're on they're on a little a little astro turf. You got you got Slinky on the on the sidelines. Yeah. Slinky's over there in Andy's room. Yep. On the sidelines. All I can think of is VTubers slamming into each other. Mm -hmm. That's basically That's what it is. It yeah. should be VTubers. Forget Ice Shield 21. Mm -hmm. It should be VTubers mm -hmm. uh uh with mocaps. Okay. I'm I'm the next mocap on yeah what are they are they playing football they're are they playing doing something football. else no they are playing football yeah. and the mocap's picking it up and someone is translating it to where it's you know he's like uh, uh thanking you for the bits yes right like like do a forward pass and then like a thank you to camera yes you know just a classic pass and camera and then hey you know so they did that who did that <laughs> Pixar did that. Really? Yeah. So last weekend, uh, there was uh, one of the fo one of the NFL games. They go and do it in England for some reason. Okay. And so it ends up being god awful early in the sure. morning. And so they're like, we'll do the regular stream in the middle of the morning whenever it, w it would be. But also, like, hey, let's p let's Toy Story it. Let's Toy Story it. And I have to tell you, impressive. Very okay. impressive, I think. You know, they've got tech and technology. The clips I saw looked really good. I know that there are moments where things were not perfect, mm -hmm. um, but the technology was really was really really good, and everything about it seemed for divorced dads. <laughs> like there, why do they have to be divorced? But there wasn't anything in there for children. Okay, like it was in Andy's room. Like they make this whole th like every time they would say like uh, Deshaun Washington uh, got a touchdown here at Andy's room, not like th the arena that they're yeah. in, in in England or whatever. Just is your name some field or something? Uh, and well, it's yeah. And they they uh, they it, again maybe this was the highlight package that I watched, but they only had it seemed like they only had one music cue. Uh, some original, probably not even an original piece, just probably something from screaming guitars. Or is it? Is no, it's it? like plunky, like cowboy Toy Story music. Okay, you got a friend, like not, but not you got a friend. I mean, because that would have been expensive, <laughs> yes. right? And then the commentators are just doing normal NFL commentary, like they're not being like, oh, he's got a, a you know, a, a, it's not like they're explaining football to the to the to, to children. No, they're just doing the football commentary, and also it's in Andy's room. Now, what what was this called? The, the National Football League. Oh, this was football. They actually did this. this was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through this was Pixar. Uh, uh, ABC had the right. To was it. it because of the writers' strike that they did that? No. Was that on a Saturday morning? Yes, it was on a Saturday morning. It was on is, a, it, is, like, it, is, is streaming available of that now? Uh, uh, some maybe I, I don't exactly know. Yeah, it, I mean, where is fucking football available? Is a question. Yeah. But it was it was made as like an alternative feed. Like they've done they've done it for football. They've done it for like F1 less and violence. <laughs> well, so what's the next thing that they do? Right? Like I could see I could see someone. Okay, get ready for this. Okay, it's. You can't just go to the go to another sport, right? You can't just go to another like established big sport okay. to do this next, right? You can't just be like, hey, I don't know, let's take baseball and make it Wall-E. Like, it, it, a, you just look like you're biting on Pixar's the Toy Story their, thing, their shit, yeah. Uh, and B, like uh, baseball, uh, you're gonna hook, you're gonna hook something on a baseball where they do eight million games a year, right? You know what? They don't do a lot of games of every year, and is booming. Pickleball. Yeah. Do and and pickleball seems to be like it's not bad. It's kind of like a money guy thing. Sure. It's like a money guy kind of thing. Yeah. And those guys love doing so. So I think if you do pickleball, 
You could, I think you could skin it with something, but we need to figure out what to skin it with. Uh, for uh, because uh, you could go Pixar, right? You go 3D CGI. That's easy. That's that's you know, uh, beep, beep, okay. But what about Baki? I, I was thinking like Roger Rabbit. Then you can get a mixture of mm -hmm. of. Uh, then you can put in Donald Duck and well. It would, a you would get you would get neither of them oh, that's because true. it would be too expensive. That's true. So Baki, huh? Cat, Scooper Nova Girl suggests cats. Cats. Ooh, cats. Cats play Animal pickleball. Crossing pickleball. And okay, that I feel like that would be Animal Crossing pickleball. pickleball. That I think Animal Crossing is too slow. You couldn't be like <laughs> with, with like a villager. You could do Tears of the Kingdom, like there's Zelda enough character. Stuff? Yeah, Zelda stuff. You can, mm. Okay, so here's the thing with 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 the Toy Story thing, all of the players just became kind of like faceless guys, yeah, just little figurines, right? And so it might be tough to say that like, okay, the two guys playing pickleball are Zelda and Link. Right. That might be a little, that might be editorializing in a strange way. I mean, I like, I like that idea because you can, you know, you get into like all the crafting stuff, mm -hmm. although, yeah, whatever. Uh, or maybe yeah, it's like a goblet, but it's the goblins. It's two little goblin yes. guys. And they're like playing yes. the pickleball. Uh -huh. And then. And the pig, the pig characters too. Mm -hmm. And they could just fight against each other. And... Yeah. I'm sure the players will love that to be AR replaced with goblins and pig guys. <laughs> But we could do it. Solved it. We could do it. Yep. We can do it. Scooby Nova Girl says it's Mario uh, Tennis. Uh, fuck. Oh, fuck. God damn it. But it's pickleball. It's not tennis. But I was thinking, what if you put F1 and did Mario Kart? Like skinned, skinned F1 with Mario Kart. Okay. Well, they've got, they did a, they did a kids F1 okay. broadcast. Okay. I watched the kids F1 broadcast. Can I give a little race report on that? Please do. Um, with, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I like the graphics. The graphics were cool. They're really colorful. They had little 3D guys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can yeah, come in. on in. They had 3D guys. Yep, that's, that's right. exactly what we're doing. Exactly. Here, grab Pick up the, the mic. Pick up the mic. Oh, okay, sorry. I heard there was a blowjob factory and wiffle ball bats all at the same time yep. going on the show. Hey, everybody. Okay. Look, it's Scott. Hello. Hi, Scott. Hello. <laughs> Where's the goddamn Right there. Right there. Hey, there you are. There right, it is. Cool. How was it going, Scott? It's going great. What yeah. uh, what what brings you around? I got a book out. This book right here. That book. That book oh. right here. What is it? It's called The Crypt Shakedown. Mm -hmm. It is military sci-fi, and horror. Some yeah. cosmic horror in there. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. Um, we flew in yesterday. Uh, we did the uh, Ross Patterson podcast this afternoon. Now we're doing Great Night tonight, and it's going to be. I'm probably more drunk on this podcast than the other one, but okay. uh, it yeah. remains uh -oh. to be seen. It remains to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good chance. Pretty, Pretty good yep. chance. But the book came out today. That's so right. We are, um, as big believers in live streaming, podcasting, all that, we're trying to get on a couple of shows and pimp it out. Yeah. And, uh, are you trying to push uh, Amazon or Kindle or the Well, we want e people to buy whatever they want. Wherever. But okay. at scottsigler.com slash the crypt. Okay. Uh, and we, we, we already are at number four in Audible and Sci-Fi, which is Excellent. amazing. Wow. It's the number one new military SF release on Amazon right okay. now, which okay. is just fucking huge. That is. Did, you voice, did you voice the book? No, this is uh, Ray Porter did the audio book. Okay, great. So we, we're expecting great things for the audio book, but it's a, a yeah. ton of work has gone into just getting to this day. And to see it uh, resonate like that is great. So now what I'm yeah. hoping is the Great Night crew puts it over the top, yeah. bumps it up to number one. Absolutely. Find that shit at Audible, man. And All you bitches in the chat room, oh. fucking diamond up. Let's go. <laughs> fucking order this shit. Let's go. He's not being crass like we've done this. This has been. Right. Yeah. This This is. We, we pimp. We put yes. them this hard, yeah, and everybody picked. in the in the chat just goes "fuck yeah, yeah. fuck yeah." yeah. <laughs> so fuck it's, yeah. it's already it's already a home run. If we can bump it up to number one over the next day or two, then yeah. it's stretch party goals. time, That's party great. time. You Excellent. Know? If people if people are super excited about by the crypt, how long are they going to wait for book two? Well, that that remains to be seen. Um, I got I got a book called Warpath that to finish up. Gotcha. And then I do a crazy series called the Galactic Football League. Yeah. And then after Warpath, I have to do the final draft of book seven. And then I'm just locking myself in the office and writing the next four books in the series. Wow. So I think it might be a wait of a year and a half or so for book two, but then it's just going to be boom, 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 boom. We'll crank them up. You said all of that, and I thought it would be like 
three, four years, it'd be five next decade. I got shit to do, son. I got shit to do. <laughs> he said, and in three weeks, I'm working on. Do you do you think you're like? A, a, would you consider yourself a fast writer? Not really. No, I just put in a lot of hours. I'm ADHD to the gills, so it's just getting even 2,000 words. Remember, I write full-time. It's my job. So writing 2,000 words a day hmm. for a lot of full-time writers is not that big of a deal. That's a bit of a challenge for me to get through that much. But if I do that, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's 10,000 words a week, which is a great, great yeah. number. You write 10,000 words a week, you're going to get through stuff pretty in, in a fairly straightforward basis. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, adequate word count wise, mm -hmm. just trying to get my shit done and get through the day. Yeah. Before I kill myself, you know, it's, uh, do you, do you find it weird that like word count is such a strong metric? Yeah. Uh, or, or I mean, but that's how how even we've been talking about because it, it's just what people expect when you talk about how fast you write. Yeah. Um, which I, I, I guess is a little quantity over quality, but I also I don't know. I, it's you, do you, most people talk about that. They're looking for the the quality work and the rate they can put out quality work. Yeah. But you still have to set you have to set a goal. Now, of course, if it's like if it's Stephen King, he doesn't feel like writing for the next three months. Awesome. He can go chill and do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's if it's me and our two person small business is relying upon the stuff I create, I got to put out a certain amount of work to get through it. Mm -hmm. I also okay. run into a lot of if I don't if I don't completely apply myself to that particular project and I get distracted enough and go start something else. Project one will never get done. And the way I gamify the system is is with word count. So as, oh, a, as yeah. a, you know, former athlete and stuff like that, I know if you put in this much work to get to this goal, you can get a lot of shit done. And that's just how we measure it. And that's true. Like uh, uh, once you start counting, counting your reps and counting right, yeah. mm -hmm. anything, you get a much better sense of what what you're doing and what, I guess, control. You yeah, you think like control. Uh, we're, a we're, we're a business. I'm the only factory in the business. So you also have to think, you know, is it, there's at least two people reliant on me putting out work to generate income for the business. So when you think about it like that, um, you are you are a factory, and if you don't produce stuff, then the business doesn't make any money. And that's, I often talk to people about, people talk about writing and art versus productivity and in and, and commerce and all that other stuff. And the thing is, is that you can write whatever you want. You can be an artist. You can make these wonderful works, spend as much time as you want. But the second you want to take a dollar for that work, and sell people that work, you're now a small business. People have to remember, mm -hmm. even if you're a creative, you're a creative, you're making stuff. If you don't sell that stuff, you're not going to be a creative for very long before yeah. you have to go do something else. Or you're already doing something else, and you hit then creative is your kind of your second job. You mm -hmm. still have to work. People want to work at that so their living can be just doing that job, which is a shit ton of work, but it's great. I don't want to, I don't yeah. want for other people. Yeah. It's terrible. I, I remember I had a teacher once who, who had told me I went to a fancy art school okay. who uh, 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 said like doing art is like 10% coming up with the idea and 90% fixing it. Yeah. Like it is the, you. Yeah. Okay. That's, 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 that's interesting. I, I, well, that's I part, part of the word count too, is that 2000 yeah. words a day. That's not finished product, right? Right. You get, that's to get through the first draft mm -hmm. and then the real work begins, which is going in and, and improving that and cutting and changing editing. Yeah. Which for that we do a different word count. That's uh, what's your breakdown? Like, what is it? If you start with two thousand words, what do you know on average what you end up with? Probably about uh, about one thousand two hundred fifty. Okay. Usually gets cut down about that much, okay. and that's if you're doing it, it great. Because yeah. the the job of the first draft is just to get the clay on the wheel. Mm -hmm. you, you can't make the more you cut, the better. Yeah. The more the more you cut, the better. And the longer I go in this, and especially when I record my own audiobooks, you find out like there's an enormous amount of fat even when you're trying to write very mm. succinctly very tersely there's still stuff you just don't need and yeah. you go through and just line stuff out how long have you been doing the uh the 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 readings for the books uh your voice uh, because i i feel like i have to imagine there's there's an element you could be an author who like doesn't hear your work out loud or mm -hmm. doesn't go through the process of like reading every word. That's most authors, yeah. 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 Um, so so how long have you been doing that process of like podcastifying and and actually reading your books? Well, I started my podcast on in March of two thousand five, and that the podcast has always been uh, me reading the book and re serializing it and releasing the work. Yeah. So back in the day, I was reading one episode a week, recording, putting it out. Uh, so it's it's been that long, and those first two years changed my writing 
dramatically because yeah. number one, I thought I was pretty hot shit, frankly. I mean, I know I was like, I haven't been published yet, but I got this. I'm, I'm awesome. Sure. And then I'd write it. And then when I started to read it out loud into the microphone, I would get bored with my own work. And I also be like, this shit's terrible. And then you have to, then you have to listen to the audio and edit it on top of that. Yeah. So those first two, three years of doing that just helped me immensely. Yeah. Mm. I'd probably write 50% of the content now that I would have written back then. And that other 50% was just wasted garbage unnecessary. Yeah. So it's helped me enormously. Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of creative people don't, don't take the time to do or, or, I mean, it's, maybe it's a big ask, but you know, listen to what you put out, read what you write. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of people don't, and a lot of people miss tons of stuff, tons of obvious stuff yep. that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a perfectionist in me, but I'm always like, if anything wrong is like a red light. EK always comes to me and my, my wife's a comic book okay. uh, creator and she'll come to me and say, read this. And I come at it as an actor. So as I'm reading through it, then I start going, okay, I've got questions. And that helps her in she's the... She's giving you the script, right? She's giving me the whole thing. Yeah, uh, like the page layout and everything. Okay. Usually we'll start with a, a thumbnail and, and the dialogue and how it's going to go. And, uh, and so we'll do that and then she'll go. And then as she gets closer to creating the, the whole thing, uh, I'll look at it again and go, okay. Uh, and I'll read it and start asking questions. I never say you shouldn't have this. It's always like, so at this part, what's happening here? What 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 is what is the intention between these two people? Okay. And she'll like, oh, that's not obvious. And I was like, I'm just trying to figure it out. And then she'll go back and fix that. So, and I mean, it's not passive aggressive. It really is. Many times I'm going, I just need to understand what's happening in this yeah, area. Yeah. Your first first reader, first yeah. consumer. Yeah. And we, yeah. We do that too. Like people go through it and. Uh, we got one gentleman named John Viscara, who's our continuity editor. Oh, okay, yeah. And he's been listening to the podcast, I think, almost from the beginning. So he has a much better memory for all the stuff I've written before and is the primary contributor to Siglerpedia, our wiki. Mm -hmm. So I'll give him a manuscript. First he gets an outline, then he gets a manuscript later. And his job is largely just to go through and be like, okay, uh, this person you have on page 42, you killed him three years ago in this other book. <laughs> and I'll be like, fuck, ah, it's good to catch the stuff there. Yeah. So he'll catch all of that. And then he's also a partial story editor too. Oh, so good. he'll be like, I think you could punch this up. You're overdoing this. And then it goes to a story editor after him. And then it goes to a copy editor after that. So we got a lot of layers of stuff. And it's not even counting the consultants. We had... Um, four military consultants for for this one. Really, one was an Air Force Colonel. One served three tours in uh, in Desert Storm and trained SWAT teams. So he's like my small unit tax guy. Hmm. One was a commander of submarine, and one was a, a Marine who served in Ethiopia and a bunch of other places. Wow. The last one I grew up went to high school with. But all four of these guys, when I when I do this, they their job is to. This is not what soldiers do. This is not how the military works. Like, yes, but it's the future. And they'll be like, okay, well, I can give you this much, but yeah. this is not how people behave in these situations behave. So all of that, those are first readers too. Like right. their job is to bring their expertise into it. Yeah. So that when a person who has served reads this, it doesn't read like someone who's never served wrote it, which is me. So Yeah. yeah. And and you can you can you can really tell. It's it's I don't know. I I written very little for for little things, but I always felt weird if I ever tried to write something for a character that wasn't my paradigm. Yep. You know, I felt strange if I had a female character and like, what do I do with her? Uh, I don't know how. To, so like that, that's uh, uh, what, what, what is it about the, the military element that, 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 that brings you to the crypt here? Well, this the the plot of this story is a flash to cover again for all you lovely people. <laughs> this is a found object story. Okay. So there's 600 years in the future, and it's Star Trek has just like here's the human government. I have several human governments and several alien governments. There's a lot of a lot of different things going on. There is a war. One of the human governments is losing it. They discover this ship. It's an alien vessel. There's not no one inside it. No crew inside of it. And what they learn is this vessel can do something no other vessel can do. So this is hard SF, and in hard science fiction, th there is no stealth in space. So you've got the stealth spaceship. Mm -hmm. According mm -hmm. to physics, absolutely possible. There's no way to do that. Yeah. So what this is, is this ship can jump 
into another dimension, a parallel dimension to our own, travel through it, and come back out. So I kind of have a cheat code for the stealth in space. So it operates very much like a submarine in space. And the biggest yeah. comment of this is Battlestar Galactica is a World War II aircraft carrier in space. This is a World War II submarine in space. Okay. So it's closely confined. It's very sweaty. Your odds of surviving are, are not good. And they act, the dedication is actually the 60,000 people who died on submarines in, in World War II to open it up. So uh, if I'm going to base the story on my own experience, I can't tell something that cool. That's super fun, super cool, right? So it'd be a great read. So that's a lot of the military experience or, or you know, the operators, people who know how to use weapons, small tactics, people go out and do things. That's why you go see the movies. That's why you go see, you know, The Born Identity and things like that. So as a storyteller or creator, I want to tell awesome stories like that. Yeah. And that's, and, but then trying to bring it back to reality. So I want to tell a futuristic story that's riveting, but for those who have served, I want to make it real. When I write about mm. cops, I talk to a lot of cops, firefighters, scientists in particular. If I'm going to write a story yeah. about a biologist, I'm talking to a biologist to be like, does this track? Yeah. What would you do in a situation? And a lot of times, finding like that that science isn't accurate anymore. That's been improved. So that's kind of it's it's I'm all over the place. If I wrote about my yeah. story, it'd be about a you know novel about a guy who sits in his room writing all day. It's not very exciting. <laughs> yeah. I take my dogs for a walk at noon. That's hot. That's okay. good times. Man. Yeah. I just because you mentioned walking your dogs, I had a I had a moment today. Uh, I was out walking. I had to do a little walk. A couple miles. Sure. And I noticed that uh, everyone else was out walking their dog. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about about noon, right? I go, everyone's walking their dog. Am I walking me? <laughs> yes. Am I am I my own dog? Anyway, sorry. I mean, are you funny. sniffing? Uh, Dude, and... as, as awesome as dogs are, if you could be your own dog, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Mm, I, I don't know. It made, for whatever reason, it was a very weird. It was completely entire. Am I just walking myself? Am I just walking myself? That was also a little. It's a high thought. A little, <laughs> also, also, sorry. Uh, hopefully, that's not a contagious high thought next yeah. time. Am I walking myself? Uh, do you uh, do, do you find that because uh, uh, there's I guess relatively relatively new the space force uh, in in the U.S. military? Do you do you find that? Or do you worry any about intersecting with what that might become? Not really. Yeah. Not really. I, I, from what little I know, uh, it's they're doing a pretty good job. It's kind of a, it's a weird situation. We're like, okay, we're going to make a whole fifth department of the military, uh, six we count Coast Guard, and uh, we have no in, no direction or instruction for you whatsoever. You took look at the Marines. You're like, here's 200 plus years of not just tradition but ritual. And they know what works because they've got this massive database to draw back on. Mm -hmm. Space Force has got you know fucking video games in the Air Force. They, yeah, yeah. So they, SpaceX launches. The people who are doing it right now are you know they're not going to get to go to space. They're not going to get yeah. doing. These are these are people doing yeoman's work. Let's get this established. Let's at least start doing some things and then measuring what we're doing. And, and refine the process as we go. So mm. I think it's got to be a crazy job. My yeah. my nephew is in Space Force. Oh, great. And he's up in uh, Greenland right now. Oh. It, he, he was in Colorado, uh, based out of uh, uh, Colorado Springs. Okay. And then they were like, hey, this guy's going on vacation. We're going to send you up to Greenland for the next six months to do IT work. Awesome. Uh, for them, and and he's also helping do with the cybersecurity and that kind of yep, thing. That's a big deal. That's yeah, big deal. they're going to largely do that along with the Air Force, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Which is another, yeah. and that's some total sci-fi shit that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. War isn't necessarily about war; is primarily logistics. You know, it's all about it's all about supply. How many guys you can put out? How well trained they are, but largely, whoever mm -hmm. can get the most stuff into the field to get blown up. If you can put out more stuff than the other guy you're probably going to win based yeah. on the history of, of warfare over the past three centuries. Mm. But the information just changes everything, you know, that you can, you can cut those supply lines in half. You can sow chaos at home. I mean, look what's happening in America right now. We've got foreign entities pitting, mm. uh, pitting Americans against each other by doing nothing more than paying for a bunch of bots to go into chat rooms and on Facebook. It's sure. astonishing how fragile everything is once you start to get in the information space. So yeah. them protecting against that is a, that's part of war now. But I thought they were all real. No, I thought. No. Yeah, it turns out you didn't. They have... told me I was really cool and they were big fans. And Listen, I just believed. Dad, it. we've had this conversation before. Sorry. Stop commenting in all caps for Sorry. Christ's sake, Dad. Jesus. Accept the PayPal. Accept the PayPal. <laughs> 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 uh, it, so then, do you do you approach? I don't know the planning of the stories of 
like I'm uh, of of making a uh, I don't know a facsimile to to uh, a lot of those ex- uh, uh, wartime experiences of uh, Earth, or is it uh, is it more bespoke? To it depends. The my primary. Because you're job, also doing sci-fi, which is a wild card. I, at, at my core, I'm a thriller writer. So my job is to tell a story that raises your heart rate, and like you get, you come up here, you get a break. You come up here, you get a break. Come up here, and that by the time I have you here, if I'm doing my job right, you are, you know, going to going to work on two hours of sleep and very mad at me the next day, and that, you know, that that fills my spirit with joy. If you're miserable because you read the whole book, so my job is to to hold your attention. And to to take you out of your life, my primary job is to put your life on pause, so you can go be in this world, and be fully immersed in it, and kind of give your intellect a break. Mm-hmm. And then, largely, it's like taking a nap. You come back, you're like, okay, I thought this was terrible. My life's not so bad in this particular. That's, that's what I do. Everything everything else is just window dressing on it. So, uh, and and war is always, you know, the. People who win wars they're not supposed to win always introduce some kind of strategy that hasn't been used before, and that happens over and over and over again. So I'm really not worried about, I have to mimic things to a particular degree, everything. By the time I put something in a book, you're going to believe it when you get to that. Hmm. So I try to I try to take knowledge that we all know, right? There's things, you all know this, you all know this, we've seen this, take these common things, and I feed you this steady stream of facts that probably 90% of the people reading the book already know. And that develops a sense of trust. That's the compact that you 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 subtly come to think that this world is real, and this author is an expert on all these things, mm. which is horseshit. I, I'm like I learned just enough to put in the story, but then I start to introduce the weird stuff. And by the time I get to asking for massive leaps in logic, which you wouldn't have accepted on page one, on page three hundred, you You're don't primed. have an eyelash because yeah. I put in that framework. Mm-hmm. So I can make I can make a war do anything I want it to do, which is a weird weird thing to say. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah that, that's that's the job. The job is to do exactly that. Whoa 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 whoa. Speaking of, all right, uh, Harry, uh, someone take Brian, take this mic. Oh, whoa! I know. Whoa whoa! I didn't I didn't mean whoa like that way. Whoa 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> is this a book? Uh, yes, sir. This is. He's a writing book. now. Yes, he's <laughs> writing. I finally got one. I finally you did got it. one. You yes. did it. Uh, uh, so, so maybe we should save some of it, of it for the show. But okay. uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I just want to talk about how we met, and and like my. Can I just talk about what a gigantic? You might as well print a picture of your dick. Yeah. When <laughs> on the that actually book, is what my dick looks says, like. Right there. It says I book it. one. Yeah. Shakedown. Yes. Yeah. Like that's that because is this the is this new? This is the new. This is the first book in a series. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just like by the way. Uh, we're not even guessing. <laughs> just book one. <laughs> book one. Starting right now. Yep, book, book one. one. Grab Edition your one. ankles. There we go. Yep. Strap I, uh, in. I did a lot of uh, of yard work back in the day, and this <laughs> I got caught in a weed whacker incident. So that's, that's actually that what my penis actual, that, that looks like. Shit. Medically accurate picture yep. of Scott Singler's yep. penis. Have, have, have His forked penis. <laughs> <laughs> have you already done the 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 pitch on it or? Uh, uh, I did. Yeah. I did do the pitch later. Okay. But I can do it again if you want or out there. I don't care. No, okay. I'm here right. to sell books, bro. Okay. That's what I yeah. do. Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, uh, pro tip for everybody at home. If you ever want to have privileged access to all of our facilities, maybe host <laughs> Justin and I in your own home. <laughs> and, awesome. then, and then you, you, uh, you, you, we're in debt to you forever. That was great. That was so much fun. I'm glad that we can all be in the same room again. Yeah, it's been ages, man. That was a that was that was a real rough time where uh, the world said no. You should be you should be either in an open area or not at all, and yeah. even that was leniency. The last con we did was like 2019, and then we just went back to Dragon Con this year. So, so that's the first that, time we've been back. Uh, that was the first time that I felt um, normal. No, no, no. That I felt uh, a longing for Dragon Con. Yeah, it was great. It was because, fucking great, man. Yeah, it felt like the, the old gang The old gang was back. Well, it was. It, it, it was funny because, like, folks started showing up here, uh, here at the property, and uh, Justin and I were like, okay, now we get in our headspace. And as we're leaving, 
the before I opened the door, it was like, what if Dragon Con came to you? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm so excited about. Is that where we met, though? Was it the first year yeah, yeah, Dragon yeah. Con? Oh, yeah. no, no. Because yeah, remember, we were making too much noise that we were ruining your panel because we had, <laughs> we were doing games that involved a lot of shouting. And that was our first live show. We had never done a live show Oh, is that show right? Before. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some was, of those live it, shows that, were fucking legendary, man. Those were just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, some of them I don't remember. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not at all surprised. I've been telling uh, telling people in uh, social media and, and online and everything. I'm like, these are two of the funniest motherfuckers together I've ever met in my life, and uh, I. Surprised I haven't urinated on myself in the previous times I've been on your panels and on your shows. And well, I may have. Not from hilarity, just like <laughs> fuck it and then piss himself. I was about to say, like, uh, wait till you hear about tonight's game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yellow fever tonight. There we go. So, All so, right. so how, how has travel been? Well, we just uh, we came in yesterday. And then, so we do the podcast today. We did the Ross Patterson podcast, Drinking Bros podcast this afternoon, which was super fun. And I got to... Wait, they're the Drinking Bros. Yeah, Drinking Bros. Yeah. We've been wondering who they are. Are they cool? Tell like they're, can, they're, can they're, they're down us? in this in this. Yeah, area. they're like 15, 10 minutes from here. Okay. We yeah. don't yeah. know who the drinking but they have a sign. Yeah. Brian doesn't have a sign. Yeah. Brian. Well, Brian. Okay. No, no, no. I, 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 oh, uh uh you know us. You are you're, you're <laughs> a connection between us and a sign. I go on podcasts with signs. That's what I do. Yeah, go ahead. Uh well, it, it, Will you number one? Will you please introduce us? Number Absolutely. Two, will you please uh, inform us about what they do so that we don't sound dumb when we meet them? Yeah. Well, they they do. Uh, Ross is an author, and uh, he has several books out. He used to direct and star in movies and produce movies. So he's got, I think, like ten to fifteen movies under his belt, and he's gotten uh, I, I, he's gotten away from that. And they have a building not too much unlike this one and they shoot four or five podcasts there the one i was on today was mm. it's a it's a sports sports betting podcast so they largely get in and talk about sports. And nice i, I don't Megan, bet at Megan, all Megan so the, ac- the action yeah like yeah. they just they talk about the what juice, how they did last week the, the spread and they're all admitted degenerate gamblers they gamble on preseason games for christ's sakes yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. i did yeah. that at defcon and and like i had to explain to brian like i need to explain to you this is a shameful thing <laughs> it's like <laughs> i'm i'm in vegas and I'm betting on preseason. He's like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, just so you know, I'm worse than you. Like, like I'm, I'm a low form of life for doing this. And then, and then he started yelling at me when I was looking at my phone because the even the casinos wouldn't show the game. Oh my god! So I had to be watching the game cast on my phone. And yes. He's like. Are you looking at your phone for scores instead of having this conversation? And I said, I explained previously <laughs> that I'm a bad person. That's a silly question, man. That's, That's a understand. silly question. Yeah. They do that, and then um, let's see. They do that. Then there's Drinking Bros, which is more of a – they do them every day. So it's more of a general topic type thing. Yep. And Ross says his wife and a, and a couple other guys who are regulars on it. Uh, and they're, they have a big audience, very successful, and I had, I had a great time. Hot you just dog. you will just love to see the facility. I, I, I didn't amazing. realize that, that 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 Southwest Austin is a whole scene. Yes, yeah, I was able to batch all would... this together in one day. This is my third podcast. This it's great. Well, I have then you there. to go like ten minutes. I away. know. That's I mean, what I'm talking about. <laughs> you haven't even been out to the Wizard Academy. No, no. stuff. No. So no. we one time I was driving back from here, and I've avoided the road that they are off of because there's a lot of. Cons- Construction, so okay. I've been doing a bunch of back roads, but one time I was going there and I see this gigantic sign. It says the Drinking Bros podcast, and I illegally and probably unsafely took a picture of the <laughs> sign and sent it to Brian. I'm like, "Who the fuck are the Drinking Bros? Yep. We do a podcast. We're on this road. We should be friends." And that you was also eight drink. months ago. Yes, like okay. so. So nothing happened. But uh, I'm very, very excited now. There's connective tissue. I'll totally, totally introduce you guys. Wait, yeah. uh, more importantly, will you vouch for their experience? For their experience, or your experience? No, no, no. no. Well, actually, you know what? Vouch for us. I don't I, care. I'll, I'll vouch for both sides of it. Right. They we, got a we super pro operation. Yeah, yeah. It, they, I was super impressed. Uh, How many neon signs with a uh, previous show do they have behind <laughs> them? I think they've got the previous show. Yeah. I think they got one neon sign in there, but okay. they have. How many times six, did they change their main podcast name? 
I don't know. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's... We're up to... We're, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, it, it could be I, five I, by you the know end of You know what's great I, for marketing? I, changing your podcast changing name. Changing the name. It's the yeah. best. It's how you got to do it. That's what everybody loves to do. Yep. Uh, uh, to be Why re- remember a thing when I can remember a new thing? <laughs> uh, to be real, like, I, I I don't even want to take one step in the setting up a beef thing. Like, I just really want to know No, of course. There's no beef. There's no beef. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Where in any of this did yeah. you think we were setting up a beef? Oh, because... Aside from, fuck them. <laughs> 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 Schwitt is like, there's only yeah, one podcast sign. in this town. Yeah, no. for you. He, he, just knew. he knew his teammate. He knew, he knew that I have there's one. There's only I one, one podcast move. in this town. I have one move. <laughs> Drinking bros, there's oh. not enough room in Austin yeah. for both of us. Exactly. Yeah. I bet Either you you're not really the... brothers. <laughs> Either, you... <laughs> Either you need to stop being bros or you need to stop drinking. drinking. You can have... <laughs> Show me the long form birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> you're not really brothers. Oh, my God. Yeah, but uh, that was great, and they gave me, uh, I got a big bump out of that pot because they do a live stream like you guys do. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we went, uh, the book today uh, started out low, which always happens, and then we went to um, number 12 in... This is on mm-hmm. Amazon? Yeah, this is oh, on Amazon oh, Audible. Amazon. Oh, so Amazon. we're in the middle yeah. of, this is of launch a push. day. This is launch oh, day. Oh, launch shit, day. son. Yeah. Okay, no. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, no. let me give you the, let me oh. set you the stage. Let me set Look, you the stage. I'm going to X you. Okay. Here's the thing. I don't like it saying that. Here's the thing. We got today, we went to number 12 and number seven. We're the number four sci fi book, audiobook in the world right now on Audible, number four. Yep. I believe you guys, with your audience, could bump it up. I actually we're already we rolling. Do. Yeah, I think you can get it to we number can. one. We can. All right. All right. Wait, 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 oh, look, wait. there it is. No, no, no. We can't both do it, Brian. Let me do it oh. first, and then and then you do it. Hey, so man. I thought we were podcast bros. That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing. There's no we're sign. giving and going. There's no sign. We're though. giving and going. I'm not gonna lie. When the drinking bros hit, they're like, "Fuck you!" Buy this book to their audience. The fucking it went up to number four. No, uh, uh, we're we're gonna press that button hard. Let's go tonight. No, Let's we're, go, we're, we're audience. Pushing it. The Crypt Shakedown. Yep. Oh, I guess I could buy it right what now. what it is. I asked you to keep going. Okay, well, I <laughs> Shakedown. I'll keep everything alive. Yes. Because, yeah. uh, you you want to change the podcast name while we're waiting? I, okay, go I, ahead. You can I, buy it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Scott, how long has this book been in the works? Uh, it's embarrassing to say this book has been in the works since before we Buy all met. So this is 13, for real. 13 years. This is a, this is an early idea. I started doing, uh, I was doing podcasts for books called Ancestor and Earth Core and The Rookie and a book called Infected. And I started to just drop these stories into the feed. So this started out, you guys remember Lost. Yeah. Everybody's on the island. You have no idea who they are to get onto the island or how they want the island. This was the opposite. Everybody is being sent to this ship as a punitive measure for something, but you get to see what got them sent to the ship. So I started dropping no intro, so no are, nothing. These were, these were in the feed back in the day. They, the first drafts of my guests were drafts, in the feed. Yeah. So I would just drop these into the feed at random times, random day, no regularity. Which, 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 which for, for the record, there are like we've been doing this for a while. Yep. So for folks who are not aware, Scott uh, uh, was a pioneer of putting his own work into podcasting. Yep. Uh, because publishing's a fucked up, weird game. It's a weird yep. game. Uh, uh, so back in the day, you just sent. Is to uh, a bunch of motherfuckers who look like Hannah and her sisters in New York. That's right. And they say smoked over it. And then they take one small. Mostly the clothes, cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, mostly clothes. clothes uh, and in their gigantic boo font, gray hair. Yeah. They would say, like, like this one. And then that would be that. Yeah. Uh, That's but, how but, publishing thing works. That would for yep. like. For 300 years. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. Do, 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 do down. Have you bought it yet? I haven't bought it yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, my, so, uh, uh, Scott Pine, he heard the idea of putting his own stories into a podcast feed. The melding of audiobooks and uh, 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 original fiction in a yep. way that had not been done before. That's where you got your, your, your start. And so you're saying that this shit, even before we became friends, which yep. was like, Earlier in your career, the uh, 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 the um, the opening chapter is about a gentleman named Travis Ellis, who happens to be in the audience tonight. So he's been a fan for a long time. Are you kidding? No, me? he's in the. So the guy, the the lead character in this is named after a gentleman who's in the audience, and I just started dropping stories about. All of these, all these sob stories about how these people wound up on the ship. I never got to book two, which was actually be on the ship in the podcast because the career took off. We started to do other things that actually made money. And, uh, and now I've, the fans have been asking for this for 13 plus years. So I finally, like, I finally cleared the table. I'm going to write this out, write this book, partner with a new publisher called Athon. And they, they, they specialize in 
ebooks and they understand the new algorithm of the you know, the digital age. And we uh, we put this wait, out. This is wait, book wait, one. Wait, okay. So now this is the full story. They're on the ship. You can see how they wind up being on the ship. Okay. Uh, so, so so now we're at the current time. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, you know what my new favorite social network is? It's five people in a group thread. It's the most powerful social network. <laughs> yeah, it's like, amazing. Like, like forget broadcasting uh, Sounds on, scalable. on 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 your 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 <laughs> formerly Twitters or whatever. It's like uh, that's where the real sauce is. Is Please buy this right now. Five people who are actually real people to me. <laughs> yep. Yep. So five people. Uh, Scott will get on a group chat with you. Yes. Right now, if I'll you buy it. the book, he'll, he'll do he'll, it. He'll write uh, on a self every day. Write your phone number on a self address stamp the... envelope to PO Box. What's crazy is four three uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now that yep. this is hit number four, because the way they calculate this stuff, they won't tell you how. But it's the number of sales, say, in the past five days, plus is it new, plus this, and then the next day's so literally a point one. where an extra 20 or 30 copies sold can be the difference between four and one. So if you want to do a it soft target. right yeah. now, yeah. right now, like three people did. So really, we just need 17 more people. Yeah, so yeah. we need 17 more people to do it right now. Support Scott Sigler. And since this we don't is... know how many, it's everyone in the chat room right now, just buy it right now. Be just fine. buy it, buy yep. it. it I literally did. right I now did. is, 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 you is know what? the point to do it. What if you could do it without Without spending any money, what if you open up your Audible account and you realize that you're still looking? Oh at snap! You got an Audible credit. code? Uh, oh, no, no, no. Maybe no, I, I'm no, he's sitting not, on he's a bunch of doing credits. Live, oh, okay. You know, like, I, he's just bragging about the fact that <laughs> I had ten <laughs> credits. <laughs> credits what worked. I did. Yeah. Credits by the way, way no, nobody can sit on more than twelve. Yeah. Trust oh, is me. that a fact? Yep. Yes. Trust, yes. Trust, All right. Trust me. I have I've shredded enough credits into heaven <laughs> because I have as well. And yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I still have that account, don't I? I had the hubris of going up to the two credits. Are we one. number two? We're number we're one number in two. military science fiction. Yep, that's fantastic. We're we're we got that going. What I, the goal would be to hit number one in sci-fi on audio no, sci-fi. Because uh, then uh, the, uh, the goal is to be number one in the category of Books. Oh, well, if you can do that, holy I mean, cow. Geez, they said this was a blowjob factory I'm earlier. It's a blowjob factory if I had number one, buddy. I'm not lying to you. Fuck me running. But uh, this, all, this, also, this also, everybody doing terrible, we don't hit it, it trips the algorithm. And yep. the more people who buy, the more people who have never heard of me see the book later. See it. And some right. of them will like, that sounds great, and buy it. Uh, so real quick before we end the, uh, the pre-show here, get into the main show, uh, Lions football, how exciting. It's phenomenal. I'm having a great time. Don't ask me how we're gonna. Don't ask me what's coming next. All I know is three and one with the first four seasons. Beat Green Bay. Having a great time. Beat the Chiefs, which I think we got a little bit lucky. Super Bowl, you think? No, that's, Super Bowl? that's exactly what I'm Super talking Bowl? about. Not Super Big Bowl. Time. Not Super Bowl. Jared we haven't Goff, even made MVP? it to the playoffs, bro. Yeah. No. I'm no. I'm asking you to go way over your skis. No, we'll I'm not do it. You, I don't jinx. I'm asking I don't jinx. You to we got a game against the Panthers. One glimmer of success. Let me tell you what the 0 4 Panthers are going to be motivated this week. Justin, they'll be super motivated. Yeah. 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 We got to win this game. That's all I care about is this game. Next Dan week. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell's doing a great the, job. Of, of I'd vote for him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. We'll bite Russia's kneecaps. Fuck yeah. Let's go. I'm in. That's a, he's a, he's a fun dude, man. He's right. he's You're great. They're playing their actual. He's an actual psychopath. Maybe he's an actual psychopath. Yeah, he's my yeah, kind of people. Definitely. Yeah. No, sometimes I'm here. Are you, are you guys ignoring us talking about sports? Happening. They're gonna Jesus. be like like sports ball. I can talk nope. too. I'll just no, talk over right. everybody as well, and we can just have three conversations. Space Nine. They said that the hologram go on. I know that the game they made up in Battlestar Galactica was way better than it is in the football. Yes. No snitches there. Hey. Uh, Bryce. Snitches is bullshit. I don't like exactly. that game. Exactly. Yeah, what's up? Uh, uh, oh, that sounded defensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, what do Hello? You uh, yeah, 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 call up. I, I'm, I'm ready for you. I'm sorry, what's oh, up? No, no, no. I, 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 was, I was getting ready to toss because we're uh, uh, mm -hmm. two minutes out, right? Uh, yeah. Are you going to? Were you going to? I think he toss? was setting up the toss before. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bryce, no. bye. <laughs> Uh, the worst tosses on the internet. Thank you, everyone. It's uh, Tuesday, everybody. It's uh, October 3rd. Yeah, why don't we decide it's October 3rd, 2023. Bryce Castillo here, escorting you out of the green room. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Of course, if you want to support us over on Patreon, you can go do so. Patreon.com slash great night is what this is called. Let's check out uh, their birthday borner. This is where all of you lovely people who let me know about birthdays recently uh, in our Discord. So I'm going to go load that up right now. Of course, if you want to get into the Discord, I think it's discord.greatnight.tv.
I believe that's what it is. Let's uh, let's get through some of these birthdays, why don't we? That's right, I did have to yell at somebody earlier. Uh, let's see, Cappy. Cappy turned uh, 40. Turned 40 on the 5th in a couple of days. Happy birthday, Cappy. Uh, Celtic Wolf uh, today on the 1st. Happy birthday, Celtic Wolf. Uh, letting us know, sharing a birthday with Brie Larson. There we go. Uh, Beffy Dino, not beefy, no, no. Beffy Dino, October 2nd. Happy birthday, Beffy. Uh, Vlad's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Vlad. Let's see. Uh, Ghost says, in terms of birthdays, today is the 13th birthday of being married to my wife for the last 14 years. It's like 18 plus if you can. Okay. Uh, so eight months behind on the feed. If Bryce reads this, I say this. Hi, future you, though you're probably just uh, going to. What? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ghost. <laughs> and Scott Max on Monday. Happy birthday, Scott Max. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the birthday. You want to talk a little bit about. Uh, uh, some critical racing theory. Uh, we've got a race coming up this weekend, the Qatar Grand Prix at the Los Sale International uh, Autodrome. It will be, uh, I, I ended up catching uh, the 2021 uh, Qatar Grand Prix on the, uh, on the replay. And uh, that was, you know what? That was a good little race. That was a good little race a couple years ago. It will be interesting to see. I, 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 they were talking about a few years ago that, Oh well, for Qatar, we'll just uh, we'll just use this for a couple of years and then we'll replace it. And it seems like they really backed away from that. It seems like they're like, ah, this, this, this is an okay an okay circuit. But it'll be it'll be good to see. Uh, I think this will be the first time of uh, of uh, doing doing the Qatar Grand Prix with this new generation of cars as well. So that'll be exciting. Uh, we'll see if Max Verstappen continues his dominance. Uh, if uh, or or what uh, we'll see more about that. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, we've got a big fight for second place. Mercedes, McLaren, uh, Ferrari, Aston Martin, all of them are really giving it giving it the go. Uh, caller, uh, yes, caller. Bryce. Hi, yes. Bryce. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Uh sorry, I was just checking my phone. Uh, when's the Austin <laughs> F1? It is in uh, two two weeks, I believe. Because I'm seeing commercials now. Yeah, there's a lot of commercials. I'm seeing the billboards for uh, Ferrari. Are you brand. going? No. Are you going to have a meetup? I would love to. Are but you I... going to go? No. I... Why not? Because I don't have $1,000 to burn. Yeah, yeah, I'm not on. You love F1. I do, and also it's expensive. Oh, but wait a minute. Are you just bullying me? Yeah, How I'm many poor. people are I'm here sorry. right now? If everybody gave $100 right now, then Bryce could go to F1. Yeah. I, he, what yeah. if everybody clapped and made Justin give him $100? Everybody uh. clap for Justin. He's pulling out his wallet, folks. That was a $20 clap. Somebody uh. hand that. <laughs> Somebody hand that. Go hand that to Bryce. Yeah. All right. Up oh, 25 bucks. Uh, to Bryce, okay. just go past that. That was. Have all mix it over. Here. But that was a that was a representation of all of your clapping, not Bryce. <laughs> Bryce is a pure angel of light, but uh -huh. all of your clapping was a one fourth of what I wanted. Oh. Yeah, I have one fifth. <laughs> one what? fifth. It was right. one fifth. Yeah, Sigler augmented it. <laughs> Sigler <laughs> was right. like government aid. The, yeah. uh, uh, so so uh, real quick, he I, was I, the I, IMF of Bryce's. F1 dreams. God, it's great <laughs> to be back at Dragon Con, isn't it? It is good. Major con vibes today. Yeah, it is. it's a lot awesome. of a lot of good con good. shit. We're gonna have a, a very exciting uh, audience uh, applause line when I get set up for this for, to start. I the know show. we're gonna have a super spreader event. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, too soon. It, too soon. Being told we've to got sci-fi authors. We've got anime voices. We've got oh whatever my God. these Yeah, two we are. do. Like, no, I mean, we have us. I feel like we yeah. we just conquered. We are con critters. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, we are things you see at cons. Uh, yes. At least Dragon <laughs> Con. Not, not, okay. not cosplay, yeah. though. More cosplay. No, we've been there in, we've, we've done multiple cons. Oh, man, that for next time, if everybody cosplayed, that would be amazing. Yeah. We should do a cosplay night. Uh, we should cosplay. I'll you know cosplay the you know you. Halloween is on a Tuesday, right? Oh yeah, Halloween's coming up. Halloween's you know it's a, a national Tuesday, there, thing. Yeah, International. everybody dresses up. It's actually, uh, around the wait world. Wait a minute. Well, uh, uh, there's something happening on besides Halloween. Uh, uh, it's on Tuesday. No, uh, our show. Do we want to dress up? <gasps> on Thank Halloween? you for joining. 
Do we want a full on? You know the best part about having a producer is <laughs> not listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Bryce, dress up as Bryce just set up Halloween's on a Tuesday this year, and you were like, "Holy shit! I just had an idea." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it's supposed to look. I want to dress up as Metalloid Maniac. What is that? What's really going what? on, Metalloid Maniac? Did you did you incredulously what me because I didn't know what metalloid maniac there is? Was. Hold uh, on. Yes. No. Make okay, noise if you know who the metalloid maniac is. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Blind loop. Okay. And okay. It's All Justin right. Justin Robert I, I, I descend. Okay. That's Woo! fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's if fine. If I Google it, will I? Will okay. Thank you for the claps. Can I? Do I? Can I do this with safe search on? Yes. Yes. You can. It's from. I think you should leave. <laughs> and. Uh, oh. Yes. Brian Why would you live, pick the most? Brian lives in a very small community. <laughs> the most like obscure it's part. His three kids, his wife, me, and then other sounds that eventually just break in. Like <laughs> he gets fragments of sentences from other stuff. But other than that, it's just the community and the things we watch. And he just assumes that's the national discourse. <laughs> it's I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's like the least memorable character. Okay. Oh, are you kidding me? Bullshit. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> oh. Uh, Wait, why uh, are we saying bullshit? Wait, no, we can say bullshit. Yeah. No, yeah. I, well, I, I didn't want to be rude to Bryce. Oh, no. Fuck you. This time? I, I mainly am just hoping he'll pull up a picture of the metalloid maniac. And I don't know, Willie. Maybe I was waiting for you to say it again so I could remember what you said. Metalloid maniac is yeah. his ground. No, so that so that's built. the thing is that there's two versions of the metalloid maniac. There's the cartoon version, and then there's the old man who's <laughs> playing the metalloid maniac. This is the comedic the tension <laughs> for which a yes. sketch comedy scene is built. Uh, so I would have met. There we go. <laughs> that's yeah. what I want to dress that's, as yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. I had a difficult conversation with my daughter today. Yeah. <laughs> is what he says. All right. That we is... should do a comedy show. As opposed to talking about comedy skits. Well, uh, 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 or we can keep adjudicating it. Brett? Uh, whatever y'all want to do. All right. Get off the stage. All right. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody. It's the pre show. We're going to do this thing. Hi, 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 hi. Let's do our final checks here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Brett, are you ready to do a show? Hello, friend. Ooh, what about Brian? Yo, yo! And Justin? Yeah, yeah! What about Annalisa? Yes! Yes, and uh, oh, is that a Kinnon? Yeah, hey, Kinnon! Ready to go. Oh. What about the chat in our beautiful studio? Oh, 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 oh. Thank you so much for joining us. Patreon.com slash great night one more time to get all of this shit in your face. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start. <laughs> there it is. We're gonna start the show. <laughs> Fred, are you ready? Yes. All right, I'll count you in. In. 